Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and this is episode 335. That means I've been doing this show for a long time. I think it's, I'm into my sixth year, maybe? At least five years. But um, anyway, after all this time, I still have no idea how to do lighting, as you can tell from this video. Um, I'm shooting this in the evening. I'm sitting, in, usually I'm sitting in these chairs over here, but I'm sitting at my desk just to shake things up. And I've got a collection of little light sources, but it's awful. You can, I'm glow, glaring pretty badly and it's all dark behind me. I have no idea. So if anybody has any lighting tips, feel free to share. Because uh, yeah, I'm a toy guy, not a lighting guy. Anyway, I'm Mike. The part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is some new Masters of the Universe Origins figures. Now, Origins is Mattel's line of 5.5 inch Masters of the Universe figures. They are modeled after the vintage line from the 80s. They've been doing this line since I think 2021, maybe 2020. Uh, and I've been collecting it since the very beginning. Uh, on my channel, you'll find a playlist that's got reviews for waves 1 through 19, plus some of the, uh, the vehicles and the play sets and the box sets and things like that. Um, so here, these are my latest Origins figures that I'm going to talk about today. Only, I don't know what to call this particular video. I guess you, you could say it's Origins Wave 20, but I don't think uh, Mattel refers to it as that. This isn't really a wave of figures at all. Uh, in the beginning, you know, they would put out, you know, a set of four to six figures, and they'd all hit the shelves together, and you could order them all together from one location, and, you know, that's a wave of action figures. But now the line has kind of died off. Mattel seems to have shifted focus to their compatible six inch line called Cartoon Collection, which is a fun line as well, but the figures are based off of the old Filmation cartoon rather than the old toys. Um, so I'm collecting some of those figures, but I'm not all in on the Cartoon Collection the way I am with Origins. So yeah, I really don't know how much longer the Origins line is going to last, um, but I'll keep buying it as long as they keep putting them out. So the figures that I have for you today are kind of a bunch of exclusives. One of them was a Mattel Creations exclusive that you could only buy on Mattel's website. Two of them were Walmart, I believe, online only exclusives, which I was not able to get because it was Walmart uh, USA specifically. Uh, I live in Canada and these figures were not available on Walmart's Canadian website. But fortunately, I think the exclusivity deal dropped and they showed up at Big Bad Toy Store, one of the bigger online retails, retailers. So I was able to order them from there. And then the last figure I've got, uh, he is not somebody you would find at retail. Um, I assume he's an online exclusive. I don't think he's exclusive to any one shop. I actually found this one at a local comic shop. So, uh, yeah, that was cool. But I don't think you're going to find him in a Walmart or a Target or anything like that. So, anyway, yeah, it's not really a wave of figures. They're kind of pulled from various locations. But they're all pretty fun figures. And, uh, yeah, I'm happy this line is still going, even if it's kind of on going on fumes right now. Um, but anyway, I will uh, turn the camera around since I've got such terrible lighting here anyway, and we'll focus on the figures. So the first figure that we're going to talk about is my newest figure. This guy just arrived in the mail today. This here is Demo Man, and this figure was exclusive to Mattel's website, uh, Mattel Creations. So oftentimes these figures sell out really fast. I don't know if this guy sold out or not, but I always kind of jump on there right away and I, you know, kind of impulse buy him because the few times that I've decided to sit and wait and kind of ponder whether I needed this figure or not, uh, they sell out. So I have missed out on a couple of the Mattel creations and I really didn't want to miss it on Demo Man. He's kind of a fun, cool looking character. So he came on the standard blister card with the red exploding rocks that we're used to seeing on most figures. But on the back of the package, instead of the kind of cross promotion where you see the other new figures and you get a little uh, example of the play features, which you'll see that on the other figures we talk about. This guy here just has one big kind of mural, one big piece of artwork on the back of the package, which is common with the Mattel Creations figures. It's pretty cool. And uh, for that reason, I'm, I might hold on to this package. I don't know. I try not to be somebody that holds on to packaging too much, but it's hard to throw out some really nice artwork like this. Uh, anyway, before we get into the figure, we'll talk about some of the accessories. Like all the Origins figures, he comes with a mini-comic. 
Now, in the old days, when we got whole waves of figures, every figure in the wave would come with the same comic book. So if there were four figures in the wave, a little mini comic would come out that found a way to bring all four characters into one storyline. One thing that's kind of nice about this new format where you just get figures one at a time is they get a comic book that's like specific to them. So this one stars Demo Man. And it gives one of the versions of his history. Um, they say he's a demon that merged with Keldor, and together they formed Skeletor. Um, I think that's kind of the origin they came up with uh, during the Masters of the, of the Universe Classics line, which is the first line that gave us a Demo Man figure. Um, now, oddly enough, this figure does not come with one of these little sheets. The Origins line, one of its gimmicks is that you can swap out all the parts. So you can put He-Man's head on Skeletor's body and give him Beast Man's arms and all that sort of stuff. Pretty much all the figures have the same swappable parts. Um, but it is nice to have this little instruction sheet so you don't accidentally pull off a part of him that's not supposed to. But uh, yeah, so all the other figures come with one of these, but Demo Man did not. Otherwise, he's got his sword accessory here. He also has this, I don't know, is it a mace or a ball and chain? I don't know what you call this thing. He comes with two extra heads. So he's got this skull head, which we saw before. Um, on one of the uh, like skeleton warriors. And he also has this bonus Skeletor head, which is based on the artwork from the original mini comics of the 80s. I think this is actually the probably the best Skeletor head available in the Origins line, but we did get one of these previously with one of the other uh, Skeletor figures. So both of these parts, you know, neither of them are anything new. We've seen them before. And as far as the accessories go, like I don't really know why he needed to come with a Skeletor head or this little skull head, but the Classics version came with both of these as well. So it just seems to be kind of like following the trend of whatever the Classics version came with. They already had these things sculpted, so, you know, why not? I don't know if I have a whole lot of use for them. Now, if you don't have the previously released uh, mini comic head, I would definitely think you'll get some bang for your buck out of this, because if you don't have the previous release, I would put this one on any of the previous Skeletor releases because this head is definitely the best Skeletor head that we have. Anyway, we'll get these accessories out of the way. So even though they've kind of retroactively come up with a story for this guy, that was not where he originally comes from. I first learned about this guy again a couple of years ago, maybe almost a decade ago at this point, when uh, Mattel was producing the Masters of the Universe Classics line. And they were doing some really deep cuts in that line. And two of the characters they gave us, Demo Man and Vicor, were characters that were based on the original concept art when the Masters of the Universe line was first being created. And they wanted a Conan-esque kind of Viking warrior named Vicor who had long dark hair. And this was the bad guy, some kind of skull-faced demon. Now, obviously, those characters evolved and they turned into He-Man and Skeletor. But these original sketches still existed, and Mattel decided to make those sketches into brand new characters, which is pretty cool. And for fans of the lore and of just the history of toys, you know, it's like a fun little Easter egg. So if you're a kid and you get this toy, you wouldn't see him any differently than any other weirdo in the Masters of the Universe line. But fans that know the backstory think it's pretty cool that this guy is based on the original Skeletor concept art. Now the sculpt is nice. You know, the color is a little jarring. It's that, like, neon green. But I'm kind of used to it because, as I've mentioned a couple times already, I have the Demo Man that was released in the Classics line, which I'll bring him out here for a comparison. So you can see he is larger. He is more detailed. The Classics line is still, in my opinion, the best Masters of the Universe line that we've ever gotten. It's a good scale. Some of the articulation is a little lacking, sure. But I really love the paint. Like, you see, he's got that wash on his skin and even on his tunic. So it's not just a solid color. There's kind of a wash that brings out the detail. You know, here he's got the little rivets painted kind of copper, and there's some different color metal on his chain here. You know, there's a lot of detail, but this figure here lacks a lot of that detail. The rivets aren't painted. It's just a solid color chain across there. 
all this here is just molded in solid silver plastic where on this version we get some of those spikes are painted different colors and again the swords get a nice little wash on it, it brings out the detail this one is just a solid piece of silver plastic it's most notable in the skin i think so even though he was really bright and neon that darker green wash helped to mute it a little bit and maybe make it seem a little bit more realistic or this guy you know it's it's just really really bright green but the detail of the face i think they retained that pretty well like they haven't softened the sculpt too much i do find this piece a little awkward it just kind of floats around a little too much i wish that was a little more locked in place maybe if there was a little plug on the back there that could plug into some holes on his shoulders um, this piece here also floats around kind of awkwardly when you bend his arm. Like, I wish that stayed in place a little bit better. And also, even though I've only opened this guy like a half an hour ago, I find I've been really struggling to get him to hold his weapons. Both of them seem to fall out of his hands really easily. Now, this was a problem in the first wave or two of the Origins line. Hardly any of them could hold on to their weapons. But I, they got a lot better with that. But I don't know, maybe it's because he's using the same hands as the Wave 1 Skeletor or something. But he just does not seem to want to hold on to his weapon very well. So, anyway, there you go. That's Demo Man. I don't know if I have a whole lot more to say about this guy. But he is pretty cool, and I am glad that I decided to pick him up. So next up we have Vipor. So this guy, I believe, is only available online at various retailers. I had pre-ordered mine from Big Bad Toy Store, but uh, then I happened to go into a comic shop um, out of town and found him on the shelf. And I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to just grab him off the shelf. Uh, I always, I kind of hate canceling pre-orders from Big Bad Toy Store. I feel a little bad about it. But at the time, my pre-order was saying this thing isn't expected in stock for at least another month. And where I'm up in Canada, it usually takes orders from Big Bad Toy Store another month or so, at least three weeks to get to me after I ship them. So even though this guy was a little bit more expensive in the comic shop, there's that benefit of getting your hands on him right now instead of waiting another two months to get him from Big Bad. Anyway, he's a pretty cool figure. Now, uh, for accessories, he's got this one little weapon in his hand there. Now, for his comic book, um, I thought he might have had his own comic book as well, the same way that uh, Demo Man did. But as I was just digging through my uh, pile of cards and stuff, I've had this guy for over a month now, so I kind of forgot. But it looks like he has the same comic as the two other characters I'm going to review today because I have the same comic book in triplicate here. So Lord Grasp is one of the other toys I'm going to be talking about in a second. So yeah, you can see Lord Grasp is featured in here. And uh, Vipor is just kind of hanging out in the background. He does get a little bit of dialogue there. He gets a a little bit there, but that's uh, we don't really see much more of him in this whole comic book. This is the other guy that we're going to talk about in this episode. But there's Vipor again, kind of helping Lord Grasp to his feet. So yeah, there's not a whole lot to uh, get attached to this character from the comic book that he came with. But I really like this guy. He is very unique. So unique, in fact, that this is the first ever figure of him. There was no Vipor in the original line. Not in the 2000X line, not in the classics. I'm actually not sure um, of his history. I probably should have taken a moment and Googled it. I know in like the, uh, the 2000X line, I think they did design a whole bunch of extra snake men that never saw the light of day because the cartoon got canceled prematurely. So characters like Lady Slither, who was like the kind of the queen of the snake men, she was a character that was originally conceived for that series, and then we got her in the Origins line for the first time. So it took, you know, a decade plus to get her actually out in plastic form. So that might be the same with Vipor. I'm not entirely sure, or maybe he's just a brand new creation that the Origins team came up with. I'm really not sure. But uh, it's cool to get new characters. You know, you don't want to just keep buying He-Man and Skeletor over and over again. I know that every time Masters of, of the Universe gets rebooted, those main characters are always the best sellers. But for a line to have legs like this, you need to add some new blood every once in a while. And uh, I think this guy is really cool and really unique. Um, he's kind of weird looking. I like that. The shape of his face. 
I don't know. I don't know if that's particularly sneaky. Like, I don't know. It's almost like he's got like a nose. I'm kind of seeing the shape of a nose there. But I like it. Like I said, it's different from all the other snake men. A lot of the other snake men have had their like bodies and their heads repainted into other characters. And who knows, maybe we'll see another character with his head some sometime down the line. But for now, this guy is quite original. Same as this armor. Uh, I, this is a brand new piece. I love that it's got these real metal chains that are kind of dangling around. And you see they loop into these hooks on his neck. And then they kind of cycle through these hooks on the lower part of his armor. It's very unique. Also, this like loincloth piece, that's kind of unique. Not too many people have this separate kind of dangling piece. Now, otherwise, I think the uh, the legs are reused from other characters. The arms, even though they're not immediately recognizable to me, they might very well be reused as well. This accessory is definitely reused. I think it came from uh, Evil Lynn. If not Evil Lynn, it might have come from the Masters of the WWE universe. Um, I know I have some female figure that's got this exact weapon in a different color. Anyway, so he's cool. And the head is kind of unique, too. Because there have been snake men with longer necks. And you're actually going to see that in this video on one of the other figures. But this is a unique piece that gives him, again, a unique look. He's got that longer neck. But you're not going to mistake this guy for Ratlore, even though they have a similar color scheme. He's just got a very specific silhouette, which I quite like. And I believe that he's modeled after the snake tower that's part of the Eternia playset. Um, I don't really know why or what the history would be. I would kind of think the mini comic would maybe explain that a little bit better. But uh, they did introduce a Castle Grayskull man into the uh, classics line. So maybe each of the different towers of Eternia could have a different character represent them. We don't really have a snake mountain character yet, but maybe that's coming. Or maybe I'm just remembering it wrongly. But the way he's shaped and the color of his head I think it's similar to the Snake Tower in the Eternia playset. So, yeah, I'm not sure if they are, have already explained or are maybe going to explain at some point in the future that he has some tie to the tower. But anyway, he's pretty cool. And I don't really have anything to compare him to because he is the, uh, the first ever Vipor figure. But yeah, he's very, very cool. I like him a lot. So there you go. So next up, we have Lord Grasp. And I don't know if you're supposed to say that with an accent because it's spelled kind of weird. It's like G-R hyphen A-S-P. But uh, anyway, Lord Grasp. That's what I'm going to call him. And I really like this guy. Even though he's just a weird mishmash of pieces, I think it comes together really nicely to make a really interesting character. And this is another member of this Snake Men. The Snake Men have really grown in the Origins line. We're getting lots of new original characters in the Snake Men. Plus all the classic characters as well. So yeah, Lord Grasp, really, really cool. We'll get a closer look at him here. So you can see he's got this, uh, if not snaky, at least reptilian head. It kind of looks a little bit more like a lizard or an alligator or something. Then he's got this cape with this kind of nice texture on it. And he's got this cool claw with a bit of an action feature on it. This really interesting paint job. I don't know how you would describe that. It almost looks like, I don't know, honeycomb pattern. Like, I don't know if that's based on a real type of snake, but it's interesting looking. And he's got the Snake Man logo painted directly on his chest. No armor. And then he's got this uh, shield, which I believe comes with King Hiss and probably some other characters. And then he's got this snake uh, staff, which also comes with I believe King Hiss and probably a bunch of other Snake Men as well, like Rattler. Uh, anyway, so really cool figure. Now this guy, he's got a bit of an interesting backstory as well, in that in the Vintage Masters of the Universe line, um, when it was kind of fizzling out and wasn't selling as good as it used to be, they were going to produce another wave of figures, but to save on uh, cost, they were going to make them from all you know, pre-existing pieces, which was not uncommon anyway. A lot of the Masters of the Universe characters shared parts, but they were usually giving them unique heads and stuff for the most part. But for the next wave of figures, it was going to be all reused parts. 
So Lord Grasp was one of those characters, but he never really made it past the promotional art stage. So there are images available of the sketches of that Lord Grasp from the 80s, but the figure never saw the light of day until the classics line. So I already mentioned that when Mattel was doing classics, they really went deep into the lore to get characters like Demo Man based on the concept art. So of course they went to that missing wave and they gave us the first ever Lord Grasp figure, which I'll bring in here for a comparison. And just like with Demo Man, the uh, classics figure, very similar, just more detailed. So he's got a lot more detail kind of in the face. Now his cape, I would actually say, isn't as nice. It doesn't have that texture throughout. And you know what's interesting here too is I'm noticing like he has that kind of cool pattern on his claw, but it's just a simple stripe down his arm and his leg. This is really my first time comparing these two figures. Uh, I haven't had these this figure here for very long, just a couple of days really. So yeah, I do think the classics is nicer, but yeah, not that much nicer. And in some ways this one is superior because he's got that much more interesting pattern. He's got the uh, textured cape. Yeah, very, very cool. But yeah, just to give you an idea of what this guy is based on, and this guy follows the same pattern. Let me get him out of here for a second. But as far as his uh, main body goes, you know, he's got the very smooth body, smooth legs, furry, bo furry boots, furry shorts. You know, there's nothing monstery about him. A lot of the monster characters had clawed feet, or sometimes they had these weird, like, fin bumps down the leg. This guy basically just shares the basic body of He-Man. So, the furry boots, the furry shorts, you know, it's just He-Man's body. Even the torso is just a standard He-Man body. I grabbed the uh, battle armor He-Man, so he doesn't have that same chest. But the, the basic He-Man figure would have the same torso as this guy. Now, for the claw, that obviously comes from Clawful. So, he was the kind of crab or lobster man. He had that big claw with the action feature. So, they borrowed that for grasp. And the face comes from another snake man. This here is Squeeze, who had the gimmick with the long arms. But you can see that kind of crocodile-style face is a direct repaint of Squeeze. So, he's just a mixed mass of parts. Even the uh, accessories, the cape, by the way, comes from Scare Glow, and the accessories are borrowed from other snake men. But I just think he comes together really nice. Like this head, when I see it, it doesn't look like Squeeze to me. The next figure we're going to talk about, I don't think it is as successful. I don't know why I'm so tongue-tied here tonight. I think it's because I'm trying to rush through this video. I get a fresh new stack of comic books today that I'm eager to read, but I really kind of wanted to hammer out one of these videos. So yeah, that's why I didn't take a whole lot of time to adjust my lighting and why I'm not doing uh, second takes when I stumble over my words. But anyway, yeah, I think this is a cool looking figure. And like I said, when I see this guy's face, it looks different enough for me to squeeze that I don't immediately see just a knockoff of squeeze. He seems to be a unique character on his own and the claw hand and everything, the cape, it all just really works well to separate him from all the characters that he borrows pieces from. And yeah, I really, really like this guy. So I was happy to get him in the classics, but I'm really happy to get him in the origins now as well. I was really bummed when these figures first went up for sale because I found out this guy and the next guy um, were going to be Walmart exclusives, which at first didn't worry me because we have Walmarts here in Canada. But when I found out that it was online Walmart exclusive only, I knew I'd have to probably go to eBay or something to get them. And it turned out that even if you were in the States, it was very difficult to get your hands on one of these guys. They sold out really quickly. So the prices on eBay were uh, ridiculous. And I considered buying one, you know, for like over a hundred bucks a couple of times, just because I really like this character. But I'm glad I waited because he did eventually turn up on Big Bad Toy Store at regular price. So I was able to get this guy for like 20 bucks American or whatever it was. So yeah, not bad. If you can still get them on Big Bad Toy Store, I would recommend that you do. So the last figure we're going to talk about is Terror, I think is how you're supposed to say his name. Um, again, it's just got a kind of a weird spelling to it. So you can see it's not Terror, it's Terror. 
And by the way, there's Lord Grasp with his weird spelling. So, uh, yeah. This guy came with the same mini comic as the other guys. So you might have seen him when I was flipping through this earlier. There's a little shot of him, and he's here helping Lord Grasp to his feet. Uh, and he's got some sort of blast attack, a screeching attack. But anyway, th there's not a whole lot to be known about this guy because he's also a pretty much a blank slate. He comes from the same missing wave of vintage figures as Lord Grasp. So again, the vintage line was winding down. Mattel planned another wave of figures with just reused parts to save on money, but they ended up not even bothering with it, so this guy never saw the light of day, never got past the concept art stage, but they put out a version of him in the classics, and now we have him here in Origins. So let me bring out the classics version for comparison. Now, this guy did come with the option for an extended neck, but I don't have him displayed that way. I've got that accessory tucked away somewhere. I'm not sure why I displayed him with the shorter neck. Um, I think it looks good either way, really. But uh, the longer neck does help him stand out a little bit more. But uh, otherwise, these are basically the same design. Um, so, yeah, he's pretty cool. This one's got, I think, a little bit more detail, just as you would with any classics figures. But... You can see the similarities in the designs. Now, the biggest difference that I spot right away is with the uh, kind of metal arm. Like, look at all those silver highlights they've added to this guy's, whereas his is just solid black. So, for accessories, I think the only thing this guy came with was some swappable parts for his hand. So, you see, I've got him displayed with the claw, but he also came with the hook and with the laser accessory. This guy here, I've got him with the laser accessory. But uh, yeah, I don't know where I stuck the extra, the extra ones, but I think that's all he came with. So anyway, comparison-wise, you can see the two figures, pretty similar. This guy is a little more purple than this guy was. This guy is more of a blue. But uh, yeah, we'll get rid of him. And now we're going to bring out the figures that this guy was made out of. So, for the legs, with those big metallic boots, he's got Mosquitoes boots and legs. Now, for the uh, torso section, he's got the standard furry shorts, but then he's got the Snake Man logo, so I think that probably comes from somebody like King Hiss, one of the other Snake Men. Now, this metal arm, which is kind of his whole shtick there, that comes from Trapjaw. So, Trapjaw has the same pieces as well. I've got my trap jaw displayed with the laser gun, but he could just as easily have the, the hook accessory. So that's where that all comes from. And you see with trap jaw, he had this belt that allowed you to display your extra pieces so you didn't have to throw them in some spare parts bin where you wouldn't uh, ever see them again. And that's the problem I have with this guy. He doesn't have storage for his extra parts. So I don't know where the other two attachments wandered off to, but they're not in my immediate vicinity. And then the neck. The extending neck gimmick first came with the Snake Man Rat Lore. So just like with this guy, you can choose to give him the neck or not. Um, now he also has the same body as, uh, as Rat Lore. So you can see the torso, arms, and he's got that tail. So it, at first, I assumed he had the same body as Whiplash. But you can tell that he's got the rattle there. So that's actually the tail from Rattlore with the, with the rattle. Although Rattler rattles. Terror does not. So that makes sense, I suppose. And then the last piece and the most recognizable piece is the face of Whiplash. And you can see Whiplash has also that rubbery tail, but his does not have a rattle at the end of it. So different different components there but yeah the face i find when you get a face like this like this is a pretty unique face in the vintage line whiplash was the only character that had this face there were some other characters like beast beast man got turned into moss man and stuff like that but generally characters have their own unique face and this one here with the protruding teeth and the kind of i would say doofy look 
it was pretty unique and it's easily recognizable as Whiplash. So I don't think it works very well as another character. And where the new paint job, I think, worked to turn Squeeze into Lord Grasp, the paint job isn't enough to separate this from Whiplash. Like, he's still got those same big bushy eyebrows, the same weird overbite, underbite thing, the wide nose. Yeah, so it's, just, it's hard not to look at this and see Whiplash. But the added neck does help to differentiate him somewhat. Now, it does pop off rather easily, I think. There we go. Pop that off. And there you go. That's him displayed without the neck. That would line him up a little bit better with how I have the Classics version displayed. So, there you go. That is Terror. I think he's a fun figure, too. I don't think he's as cool as Lord Grasp, but he is another fun little you know, kind of Easter egg to the Vintage Masters of the Universe line. And, uh, yeah, I don't think I have anything more to say about him. Pretty cool. So pick him up if you can. Okay, so that was my review of my latest Masters of the Universe Origins figures. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and leave me comments below. It's always very much appreciated. All that engagement helps the channel get recommended to other people. So, yes, please engage. Anyway, I'll be back soon with another video. Until then, ciao.